Do not ignore the past, my child. It is the gateway to our future. The Steel Talons may now be lost to history, but in their prime they were but steps away from condemning the Brotherhood to that same dusty fate. Following the events of the Second Tiberium War and the Firestorm Crisis, GDI came to believe that the Brotherhood of Nod was no longer a major threat to the people of Earth. With their leader Kane presumably dead, and the remnants of the Brotherhood driven underground, high-ranking officials in GDI believed that they should shift their focus from countering what was left of the Brotherhood to halting the spread of Tiberium around the globe. Tiberium infestation had become so devastating to the environment of Earth, that GDI scientists, such as Gabriella Boudreau, claimed that if nothing was done to stop it, the Earth's atmosphere would become 100% toxic to humans within a year. These alarming predictions prompted the organization to shift a majority of its budget from military funding to research and development efforts focused entirely on Tiberium abatement. Part of this funding went to the formation of a new division known as Zone Operations Command, or ZOCOM made up of troops and equipment specifically trained and designed for reclaiming regions of the Earth, infected with high amounts of Tiberium. However, not everyone agreed with this decision. Most notably, General Joshua Mitch Mitchell, a decorated veteran of the Second Tiberium War. According to the intelligence database, Mitchell contended that while Nod may have been defeated, it would be foolish for GDI to assume that no successor would rise from the dispirited populace of an increasingly Tiberium-stricken Earth. Therefore, he argued, funds allocated towards Tiberium control should instead be earmarked for the research and development of new combat technology, in anticipation of this next potential conflict. After a lengthy, volatile hearing, Mitchell emerged with a partial victory. While GDI refused to divert a significant part of its R&D budget to the General's cause, they did agree to fund a new experimental combat technology division under Mitchell. This experimental combat division would come to be known as the Steel Talons, a name given to it by General Mitchell's admirers, one of them being the famed commando and war hero Nick Havoc Parker. The Steel Talons quickly developed a reputation for being ruthless and efficient on the battlefield, a reputation which they gained during skirmishes between them and splintered Nod forces during the interim years of the Firestorm Crisis and the Third Tiberium War. When not actively engaged in combat, however, they maintained a high level of secrecy. Due to the Steel Talons being an experimental combat division, they have access to some of the strongest weaponry in the GDI arsenal. Most notable of which are the mechanized walker vehicles. While a variety of these vehicles were common in every facet of GDI's military during the Second Tiberium War, the Steel Talons have become the only division still fielding these vehicles in great numbers. Over the years, they've also managed to upgrade their walkers as well, making them more effective in combat compared to their predecessors. In terms of the division's combat tactics, they tend to favor a strategy of bringing heavy amounts of firepower to the front lines in order to overwhelm their foes. This requires them to rely heavily on vehicles instead of foot soldiers, as vehicles can bring said firepower to the front lines more quickly. This is why the Steel Talons do not field specialized infantry units such as zone troopers, commandos, or sniper teams as part of their arsenal, and hence have no need for an armory structure. They also don't rely much on sonic technology, opting out of using weapons such as shatterer tanks or sonic emitters, preferring to rely on equipping their vehicles with powerful railguns. General Mitchell places a high value on battlefield flexibility, a doctrine that spread even to the harvesters his steel talons employ for resource gathering. Rather than the standard turret machine gun, the steel talon harvester is outfitted with an infantry-capable garrison pod, allowing the vehicle to be adapted to counter whatever threat the commander deems most pressing. As mentioned, the heavy harvester is capable of garrisoning any infantry unit that the commander wishes in a small bunker on top of it. Riflemen will provide the Harvester with anti-infantry defense. Missile squads give it anti-tank protection. 
and grenadiers act as an even more powerful defense against enemy infantry, while being better than riflemen at fending off enemy armored vehicles. In addition, the infantry bunker also makes the heavy harvesters slightly more resistant to damage. However, this does come with a downside, in that it harvests Tiberium at a slightly slower rate compared to a standard harvester. Not only are harvesters within the Steel Talons given the option to defend themselves in combat, but so too are their engineers. The combat engineer plays the same role as other engineers, which is to capture neutral buildings. However, the combat engineer is equipped and trained to use a pistol, as well as outfitted with body armor. Equipped with a gun, the combat engineer is capable of taking out Nod saboteurs or Skrin assimilators trying to capture the same neutral buildings as them. Though the engineer should still avoid standard infantry squads such as Nod militants, as the pistol won't save him against them. The first mechanized walker in the Steel Talons arsenal, the Wolverine is a legacy vehicle from the Second Tiberium War. The Mark II is the latest version of the Wolverine. A little bigger in size than the Mark I and better armored, the Wolverine Mark II is a great anti-infantry vehicle, capable of engaging targets at long range and flanking maneuvers due to its quick movement speed. The guns on it can be upgraded to fire armor-piercing rounds, making it more lethal against light armored vehicles. However, the Wolverine itself is lightly armored, and can't stand up to more powerful vehicles like tanks or aircraft. Another thing to quickly note is that two Wolverines will replace the two Guardian APCs in the support power called Bloodhounds. The Titan Mark II is the second mech walker within the Steel Talons arsenal, and another legacy vehicle of the Second Tib War. Just like the Wolverine, the Titan Mark II is an improved version of the original Mark I, outfitted with sturdier legs, a sleeker upper body design, and improved armor. Still armed with a 120mm cannon, the Mark II Titan acts as the main battle tank of the Steel Talons, bringing heavy firepower and armor to the front lines, and the ability to crush any infantry or light vehicles blocking its path. They can even have their 120mm cannon replaced with an even more powerful railgun. It can also be upgraded with exclusive armor to the Steel Talons called Adaptive Armor. This armor can be activated and increase its resistance to damage, and makes it immune to EMP attacks, at the cost of a slower rate of fire and even slower movement speed. This armor can also be applied to mammoth tanks in the Talon's arsenal as well. The Mark II does have the same weaknesses as the Mark I though, which is that it moves slow, is defenseless against aircraft, and more expensive than other main battle tanks like the Predator, which are not only cheaper to produce, but easier to maintain and deploy on the battlefield. The third and final mech walker in the arsenal is the Behemoth. The Behemoth is the Steel Talon's answer to resolving one of the key weaknesses of the original Juggernaut Walker, according to the Intelligence Database. After one too many Juggernauts were rendered a smoldering heap by little more than a Nod infantry regiment, a frustrated GDI Engineering Corps jury-rigged an infantry-capable garrison pod onto the walker's chassis. The end result was so successful, not to mention devastating to the ill-fated Nod recon patrols that came across it, that this updated walker, nicknamed the Behemoth, was soon approved for full development. The Behemoth was heavily field-tested by the Steel Talons and skirmishes with Nod forces in the 2030s. As mentioned, its defining feature is the infantry pod or bunker on the top back portion of the vehicle. It actually functions the same as the bunker on the back of the Heavy Harvester. Any infantry type that garrisons it will provide the Behemoth with whatever weapons that infantry unit is equipped with. While the Behemoth was a promising contender, it would ultimately be passed up by a new design of the initial Juggernaut. The Juggernaut Mark III would become the standard issue artillery platform, which omitted the infantry pod of the Behemoth, which gave it the ability to initiate bombardment of targets well outside its line of sight. The final vehicle within the Steel Talon's arsenal is the Mobile Repair Transport. This was an early version of what would later become known as the Guardian APC. The Mobile Repair Transport was one of the first models of this new kind of APC, initially deployed around the year 2034 as part of the Steel Talon's division. Instead of having a machine gun turret like the standard Guardian, this vehicle came with a repair crane and drones which would repair nearby damaged vehicles. This made it the perfect support vehicle for the Talons, with their heavy focus on armor. Being an APC, its primary role, of course, was to carry infantry units. 
and just like with the Heavy Harvester and Behemoth, any infantry type that garrisons it will provide it with whatever weapons that they are equipped with. In addition, it comes equipped with mines, which it can lay down at strategic points on the map in order to damage or destroy enemy vehicles passing over them. Other capabilities that are unique to the Talons is the ability to replace the 105mm cannon on the Guardian Cannon Turret with a railgun. They can also overpower their railguns on all their vehicles and buildings, called Railgun Accelerator. This increases the rate of fire of railguns on Mammoth Tanks, Titans, and Guardian Cannons, which in turn increases the amount of damage they do. However, the cost of this is that it causes the railguns to overheat and damage the very vehicles that are firing them. Unfortunately for the Steel Talons, much of the events that they are now known for are the ones where they went through a string of defeats against Brotherhood of Nod forces in the Australian Outback in 2034. During the first battle, a contention of the Division was assigned to guarding a covert research facility, which had contained Nod stealth technology retrieved after the Second Tiberium War. GDI scientists had been trying to reverse engineer the technology, but to no avail and thus the data was just left stored at the facility, seemingly forgotten about. But spies from the Brotherhood were able to locate this facility, and the now arisen Kane would task his brand new AI Legion to capture it and retrieve the data. The Steel Talon forces stationed to guard the facility tried to hold back the Brotherhood, but were unable to do so. As a last resort, they then tried to blow up the research facility so as to prevent the Brotherhood from retrieving the data, but also failed at that. The Brotherhood were able to get what they came for, but needed to make a hasty retreat as reinforcements from the Talons were on their way and would have easily overran the Nod forces in the area. During the battle between Kane's Loyalist Nod forces and the Nod Black Hand forces led by the heretic brother Marcion, the Steel Talons had set up pulse scanners in the area which allowed them to detect any Nod forces and call in reinforcements in order to destroy them. But none of these reinforcements were able to stand up to the Brotherhood's forces, even as they fought against each other. And the Pulse Scanners were eventually destroyed by Legion, so that the Talons could no longer interfere in the ensuing battle. Kane's Loyalist forces would succeed in capturing Brother Marcion and bringing the Black Hand back into the fold. Kane! Yes, my brother. By far the greatest defeat for the Steel Talons would occur shortly afterward. The Division was tasked with guarding a secret Liquid Tiberium research facility somewhere in Central Australia. The facility had been discovered by the Black Hand, and they attempted to assault it, but the Talons were able to successfully repel these initial attacks. However, once Kane sent Legion to lead a new Black Hand assault against the base, it was over for the Steel Talons. Legion was able to recover destroyed purifiers and use them to take out GDI power plants outside the facility perimeter shutting down all its defenses and rushing the purifier straight to the main lab building and destroy it. This caused a massive explosion never before seen that wiped out all Black Hand and Steel Talon's forces in the area. It also resulted in much of Australia being covered in Tiberium, killing many civilians. The event was a massive humiliation for GDI, who tried to cover up the cause of the explosion by saying it was an accident, though many people believed it was a sign that the Brotherhood of Nod had returned as a power to be reckoned with. After such a humiliating defeat, the Steel Talons had yet to be seen anywhere around the world. Even during the Third Tiberium War, there was no sign of them. The last known and most recent sighting was in the year 2052, when the Brotherhood of Nod assaulted the Rocky Mountains complex to retrieve the Tacitus. During the battle, elements of the Talons assisted Zocom in defending the facility, but they would ultimately be defeated by the combined forces of the Black Hand and Marked of Cain. While the Steel Talents may still technically exist, the Division does not appear to be at the same strength it had previously been at in the aftermath of the Firestorm Crisis. I speculate that after the defeats they received in the mid-2030s, they may have seen a reduction in funding, as GDI officials thought it better to allocate the money to other military divisions that, while perhaps not being as high-tech as the Talons, were outfitted with cheaper and more practical military equipment. And with a reduction in funding, it would be more difficult for the Talons to replace all the troops and equipment they lost fighting the Brotherhood. As Kane himself said, the Steel Talons may now be lost to history, but at one point in time, they were a very real threat to the Brotherhood, and the last legacy of GDI's military during the Second Tiberium War.